G'day, Birdman Pete with you with day two of no crashing, no kidding, and today we're going to be extending the hover. But before we go to do that, I want to revise a couple of the details from yesterday's discussion. I hope you've done some practice. I've done three battery fulls since last we were speaking together, and we're going over the basics. This is the throttle, this is low throttle, this is high throttle reminding you that as the throttle comes up and the aircraft gets light you're going to do a check of the pitch and the roll okay and then you're going to give it a nudge and it will get into the air and you're going to be in the rubbery thumb mode there with the throttle going up and down up and down up and down until it's time to land you're going to lower the throttle up a tad lower up a tad lower up a tad until it's on the ground okay now a couple of details of terminology. We're not going to talk about ailerons and elevators. A quadcopter doesn't have an aileron. It doesn't have an elevator. It has cyclic controls. It has cyclic right and left. It has cyclic fore and aft. This is helping us to bridge the gap. We're not flying fixed wing aircraft. We're flying a version of a helicopter. Okay? Now, today's exercise is slightly different. In attempting to extend the hover, you are going to have to work much harder on maintaining the level. When you can maintain the level and maintain the altitude, you'll have things going really well. But to start with, it's going to be very, very challenging. So, in addition to having a 500 millimeter height limit, we're also going to have a three meters range limit. From the takeoff point, you are allowed to go three meters forward no more anytime you find yourself pushing the three meter boundary at 500 millimeters altitude it's time to put it down if you have to put it down by slamming the throttle shut well from 500 mils you probably won't do much damage but the recommendation is always ease the throttle add ease add ease add okay i'm sure you'll go well so here's today's flying field with the three aircraft lined up and my two yellow markers well staked down. We don't want any repetition of earlier disasters. And we're about to go. I haven't decided which to fly first. I think I'll go for the Quantum Nova first. Let's get that all set up with a battery and a, an arming check. I'm wondering how you went with yesterday's exercise. In particular, I'm wondering whether anyone had the problem that the aircraft would drift on the yaw axis right or left it could be either it could be both now if that has been happening to you there are two possibilities the first possibility is that you're a mode 2 flyer and that your left hand thumb has never been so busy and that it is wandering right and left as you are applying throttle variations to cope with altitude okay that's a good answer because in the long term sense it will simply resolve itself your thumb will get used to tracking straight up and down without any left and right wandering. If you're a mode one flyer, then I am a little bit worried that you might have a tuning problem in your flight controller. And I can't hope to solve that problem for you here and now. You're going to need to find a friend who's experienced with multi-rotors and the tuning of flight controllers with a computer. Best of luck with that one. The Quantum Nova has been a bit foxy in its arming procedures. Let's see how it goes today. So, for, throttle fully down, rudder fully right. Yes, it's got the message this time. Now the plan is to do our usual pre-flight check, bringing the throttle up. Notice the nose is rising, checking trims. Hmm, okay, I'm going to ignore that for the moment. Nose is rising, so I'll try forward cyclic. Correct response. Trying right cyclic. Correct response. Okay, lifting. A nudge. Okay, now I did say that I was going to stay at 500 mils within three meters of the spot. In order to do this, in these conditions, I'm having to hold a fair amount of back cyclic. That could be because there is a very slight wind from the northeast. It's very, very slight, however. 
But if I let the stick go back to neutral, it very distinctly goes away from me, okay? So in a training situation, my recommendation is to land the aircraft, easing, adding, easing, adding, easing, adding, and adjusting the trim. So I'm going to add on some backstick trim. I will explain there is a resistance to use trims in multi-rotors. Ready to go again. Let's see what happens now. In the air. Okay. Within three meters and 500 mils. It still wants to go forward. Easing, adding, easing, adding, disarmed, trim adjust. You can adjust the cyclic trims without any real anxiety. Nudging. That's almost stationary hover. It's hardly going forward at all now. I'll bring it back. I'll make another trim adjustment. Easing. Disarming. More back trim. Adding throttle. Nudge. Okay, that's very nearly trim neutral in these very light wind conditions. Easing, adding, easing, adding, easing, adding. Disarming. I'm now going to engage the cyclic dual rates, which in my case is 60%. Arming. Adding power. A nudge. Now, it's distinctly, observe that, We've added all this back trim, and now when I add the throttle, the nose wants to rise. So I'm using a little forward cyclic to level it up, so that when I give it the kick, which is now, it doesn't do any wandering, okay? I've now released the pitch control, and still it wants to go forward. Maybe the wind has picked up a fraction, but it's all within bounds. Okay. Now the question is, how many seconds can I stay on this point? I know that I could stay here for six or seven minutes. That would be very, very boring for everyone. That was fractionally higher than 500 mils. I'm adding power, adding power, easing power, adding power, right cyclic, forward cyclic a fraction. Hovering, aft cyclic a fraction, down power, up power, forward cyclic a fraction, left cyclic, left cyclic, left cyclic, come on, let's have it going left, that's better. Hovering, see, did you see the power variations there? You probably heard them. Okay, landing. I think I've demonstrated to you that I can hover over that point. Now, this was about extended hover. And in extended hover, we're really working on these controls. You've seen it with Quantum Nova. Let's see it with something else. Arming. Armed. Okay. We'll do the usual check. Throttle up. It looks as if it wants to go forward. So I'll test that. Back stick. Correct response. Right cyclic, correct response. Nudging. Okay. This is a very powerful beast. And when my thumb relaxes on the pitch control, cyclic pitch, it wants to go forward. So once again, we're trimming for back stick. Easing, easing, adding, easing. That's it. Okay. Disarming. Back stick. Back cyclic. Trim. Okay, we've got half of our available trim. Arming. And up we go. Not too much of a nudge. This rises very quickly. Okay, 500 mils. Hands off the pitch control. That's very close to perfect pitch control. 
and I'm still in standard rates. Easing, 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 and down. Disarming. I've added a touch more back stick and now I've gone to dual rates. Armed. Five hundred mils over the spot. Counting slowly to ten. I'll just just do a ten second test here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's come fractionally backwards, easing. Landed. Okay. Ten seconds. That's a good exercise. Let's go again. Give it a bit of a nudge, not too much. Nudge. Okay, over the spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and easing. Okay? Looking easy, isn't it? But there you see some of the tricks I'm prepared to deploy. Arming, and the wind seems to have dropped a bit. Armed. Now this model has a particular problem which I was rather hoping to show you. In the air, nudge. Do you see it? It's shivering in flight. I'm bringing it close to the camera. Do you see that shiver? That is what I would call pidzy. Now, we go to the exercise. I'm hovering over the spot a little bit high. Easing, adding, easing, adding, easing, adding, down. Okay, I'm going to apply uh, cyclic dual rates. And I'm going to apply a bit of back trim, back cyclic trim. That should make things easier. Arming. Armed, lifting. Okay, over the spot for the count of ten. Further forward. I've added too much back trim, never mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Not real good, but then. The aircraft is, as I say, pidzy. Easing the throttle. Easing the throttle. Adding throttle. Easing. 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 Down. Disarming. Before you go rushing out to have a go at today's assignment, I just want you to consider the shape of the area we're flying from. It's like a letter D and the long straight side of the letter D is running east-west relative to the camera and it's six meters long. Imagine you've got a piece of string three meters long and you've drawn a semicircle centered on the launch point. That is the D and if there are going to be any flame outs I want to see the remains of the aircraft inside that D. I repair a lot of quadcopters. I've never had to repair one yet that fell from a height of less than 500 mils and was within three meters of the launch point. That is the safety, that is the no crashing promise I make you. You stick to your end of the bargain and the no crashing will just happen. Fair enough? Now all the talk about trims and exponential and dual rates, it could give you a wrong impression. I don't use them ordinarily when I'm flying. Let's go through them. Exponential, definitely yes, on all three functions, your roll and pitch, okay? Dual rates, yes, sometimes, particularly when I'm flying FPV, and trim, only when there is a very strong wind and for some reason I need to hover without holding on acres of forward or aft pitch. So. Time for you to go and try it. Stay three meters from the launch site. Stay under 500 millimeters. No kidding, no crashing.